When I sanded my first large scale model of this amazing six scale Deadshot sculpture, I did it piece by piece with traditional sandpaper and it probably took me around 15 hours. When I finally finished it, my first thought was, there's no freaking way I'm doing it like that again. So right off the bat, one of the tools I would suggest investing in is a small Dremel style sander. I found this one on Amazon for $25 and it's been a huge help for speeding up the entire sanding process, especially for quickly removing bumps left from supports. The only drawback is that the pads that come with it kind of suck. They are super thin and wear out quickly, so I would also suggest investing in some additional 1 inch sanding pads for it. An assorted pack like this has much more durable pads and they'll last you a very, very long time. Before you start sanding, make sure the resin on your model has been completely cured. If the resin is uncured, it's still toxic. It'll gunk up your sandpaper, and it's just flat out dumb to try and sand uncured resin. Whether you are using a Dremel like this or traditional sandpaper, I would recommend using a process of wet sanding to keep the plastic particles from floating around in the air. Just spray a couple spritz of water onto the model and whatever sandpaper you're using, and repeat this process every few minutes or as needed. Wet sanding not only keeps the process a lot cleaner, but it removes less material while sanding and will give you a glossier, smoother finish in the end. For removing support bumps, I usually start with 600 or 800 grit sandpaper. This level is more aggressive, so never press into the model with it. Just let it gently glide across the surface. Work it across the surface and clean it off with water every few minutes to check your progress. Once the bumps are smoothed out, you can start working your way up through the different grits of sandpaper. The higher the number, the finer the sandpaper is, and the smoother the finish will be on the model. There are a ton of different levels of grit for sandpaper, but I tend to only use some combination of three or four with great results. Starting with a low grit, moving up to a medium grit, and finishing it with a high grit. Any grit over 2000 is considered polishing sandpaper and should be used as a finishing sandpaper to give you a super smooth and glossy finish to your piece. As long as you're patient and working in this order, you can't really mess it up. There is no right combination, but it will vary a bit from model to model. My go-to sandpaper are these little sanding squares, and what I love about them is that they have a padded backing versus traditional sandpaper, so they give you more control of the area you're sanding. They are also clearly labeled on the back, so you can easily swap them out. I usually just lay them out when I start a project, throw some music on, and switch them up as needed. The final tools that I use for harder to reach areas are these metal files, mainly to reach underneath arms or underneath detailed bases. These files can be very aggressive though, so I usually wrap them in sandpaper before sanding the areas. You could also just use a cheap nail file tool. Another thing I use these files for is to prop up parts for current projects. There's no practical reason for this, I just think it looks cool. This might all sound self-explanatory, but I didn't know any of this when I started, and I spent a lot of time worrying about the different grits and damaging the model. The entire sanding process all boils down to working through low, medium, and high, and finishing on something at least over 2000. Remember, take your time, relax, and enjoy the process. These are the final results of the sanded parts, and it looks like Superman has seen better days. The parts I sanded today are from my next project, which is this massive six scale sculpture from Berserk 3D of Zod and Superman. Just to give you some scale of this model, my M5S has a fairly large build volume of 8.6 by 7.9 inches, and this is the scale of the entire model in Chitu Box. This thing is massive, and it's probably going to take me around 13 full build plates to print, so stick around if you want to see the finished result. The video should be out sometime early next week. If you enjoyed this video or it helped you in any way, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. I would truly appreciate it. I plan on doing a bunch of these quick tutorial style videos covering all areas involving resin 3D printing. Thank you and I'll see you on the next project.